There's the whistle, final quarter about to start, Victoria Park. It's getting dark, and very dark for the Saints, who are a long way behind. Collingwood lead, 89 to 35. The umpire has crouched the ball to Potter on the back line. Potter to the half-forward flank, where St Kilda playing in front. Winner mark through Baker. The ball to the half-forward line. Green behind, plays on if he didn't in fact take the mark. And the ball is out in the full forward pocket. A great duel today between Tottenham, Waters and Urquhart. The half forward line for the Collingwood team against the St Kilda half back line. Baker, Sinman and Howell and it's been Collingwood's day. 12 to 24, the free kicks in favour of St Kilda. And we're waiting for Kevin Rose to have his 25th kick for the game. He's absolutely killed them. It's up towards the centre of the ground. Howell's coming through. He's trying to pick the ball up. He handballs it out towards uh, his teammate in Davis. Davis gets it down towards the centre half forward position. But Young Austin is playing behind Boyne. And it's only his second league game. He'll have to learn to stay in front. Minot still in the ruck I see for St Kilda. He's racked almost for the uh, entire match. There's the kick by Boyne. It's a good one out towards the centre wing. Oh, Jenkins nearly pulled it down. Play on. Davis gives it across towards Sinman. Back to Davis. Davis can't pick it up. He's been tackled, grabbed. And the umpire said, I oh, will ball it up. We're only two minutes into the last quarter. And Collingwood, 13-11, leaves and killed the 5-5. Minot wins it in the ruck, but Urquhart sharks it from there. Kicks it right over Minot's head onto the half-forward line. Roger head into the play. He's bustled by Wallace. Now, Sin uh, not Sinman, Howell comes into the play. Tried to pick it up, but he's beaten for it by Hutchison. Hutchison are very fast in those first five yards. They're vital. And he passes it upfield where Wayne Richardson, already the scorer of five goals off his own boot, shoots the ball into about 40 yards from goal. A couple of Collingwood players against one another. Second bite chance is won by Ian Graham and Ian Graham who so far has only one goal one on the board but has done other good things gets a chance now for his second goal but uh, the wind is springing up a bit the flags for the first time are blowing out from the flag staffs and he'd be a good 55 yards out from goal well, that's a pretty good kick oh hit the post didn't it couldn't see in the dark light uh, can I explain this to you I, I was watching that with the naked eye it's nowhere near as bright as you see it on the picture nowhere near as bright it's very dark at quarter time, Collingwood led by six points, points, points. At half time, they're led by 21 points. And at three quarter time, they're led by 59. Just thinking of a pint of cream then, that's what I was thinking of. Collingwood a 13, 12th and Kilda's 5-5 and waiting for Bob Murray. There's his kick out towards the stand side this time. Looking for Minot, their only good big man today. Ball is knocked away by Pitt. Picked up by Tudnam. Tudnam drives it back towards the forward pocket. That's and kill the mark, and it'll be taken by another good player for him today, Sirakoski. This is going to be his 18th kick, and he's taken eight marks. That mark was nowhere near as spectacular as many that he's taken, but it was as brave as any because he knew the pack was coming in behind, and he just had to stand there, and you could hear the galloping hooves bearing down on him. Griffiths, another St Kilda star who hasn't fired to date, or it's Cooper. Cooper badly out of form. That's more like the Cooper Bowl having a battle this fellow he's been sick and he took a nasty knock and uh, he's had a rotten time here's his kick coming along the flank well Boyne gets the run at this got it under his chest it spilled from there towards Tully Tully just inside the line hoofs it over the line but at least it gains 30 yards in defense the wind is coming up from the south a bit look at those uh, flags starting now to uh, blow away There's the kick by Boyne. Oh, it's a scrubby old kick, but it's going to give Kevin Rose his 26 for the game. As he drives it up well across the centre, and we see Tuttenham there trying to get the ball. It's on the ground, and we see kick off the ground there by Baker. It's down towards the half-forward line. We see Wayne Richardson. What a great player. Out towards Pitt. Pitt been another good player for Collingwood. Gee, they've got a lot of good players. His lead, <laughs> there's Tuttenham fell over, and it's a chance for Baker if he can pick the ball up on his way through. But Howell came in to help him. Oh, he's caught with it. Handballed it across towards Dowling. Dowling having trees and a turn back and the trouble is caught with it. St Kilda took too long to get rid of the ball. The free kick will go to Terry Waters. He's another good player for Collingwood. This is going to be his 17th kick for the game and he's taken six marks. Terry Waters. Another member of the successful carnival team in Hobart. A good drop kick by Terry Waters. The turf is firmer there than at other parts on the field. It's taken here by Verdon Howell. A left foot kick by him straight to Dowling who replaced Paddy Murphy on the field after half time his kick is misdirected not often it happens and the ball is marked by Kevin Rose instead of Daryl Griffiths the player for whom it was intended Kevin Rose he's knocked up getting kicks here's the pass out to Pitt good player this fellow on the wing he's walking to most sides his kick is into the full forward line Thompson lolls into the front of the pack can't take the mark Urquhart shoots the ball forward about 30 yards Collingwood gaining all the time both on the scoreboard and of course on the field of play 
one thing meaning the other as the ball is to be thrown in and Thompson is in the ruck against Neil. Neil tries to get in front of him, but the fellow's got too much height. The ball is kicked by Wallace, almost over his head, straight to Wayne Richardson. Six goal coming up for Wayne. Wayne, another. The ball was seven minutes into this last quarter. Why not? The ball is taken away by Wallace. Wallace down there has the ball uh, stopped as we see Tuttenham going for it, coming in as uh, Dowling. Kevin Rose kicked off the ground there by St Kilda player. I think it was Dowling back to Pitt. Pitt gives it across towards Jenkins. Jenkins left hands of some 15 to 20 out to Kevin Rose. Number 28 kick coming up. He drives it towards a full forward position. Oh, he didn't hold it. And it's gone across. We'll have to wait and see. It's a goal. i got no idea who kicked it. He was given a rest and came off the field just a few moments ago. Roger Head playing as fullback. His kick out is over Burden Howell's head. Tottenham is still going as though the game has just started. Tottenham a free kick against Burden Howell. Palmer let out for the shot. And he takes the mark right on the boundary line. Palmer, he to me seems more at home playing in attack where he is at the moment, replacing Ian Graham at full forward, than in defence, has a chance to score here, and he's only been on the field a couple of minutes. A poor kick. <laughs> oh, is, that, is that Wallace? Yes. Wallace has taken the mark, and a chance for him to score his third goal, and Collingwood 16. It would make their total 109 to St Kilda's 37. A debacle for St Kilda. Collingwood go to 16 goals, 13 to St Kilda's 5-7. Out of those 16 goals, the two Rovers for Collingwood, Richardson and Wallace, have kicked six and three goals respectively. Pitt takes a good mark. It's very fast, particularly in the first 10 yards. And he's a good kick on the run. Drop kick. Full forward area. Behind Rob Palmer. Hand pass straight to Norman on his 19th or 20th man. Off the instep a bit and across for one point time on being played at Victoria Park and the crowd starting to stream away. The rut seems to have set into St Kilda at the moment, Jeff. They've lost all their confidence, Tanny. And, uh, this is a problem for them at the moment. Straight from Minot to Dowling. Dowling replaced Paddy Murphy as 19th man. Goes to Stewart from there. Stewart towards Breen. Adamson spoils Breen's mark and then bumps him across the line. Norman, hand pass towards Dowling, taken away, over behind to Tuddenham, Tuddenham a hand pass to Urquhart, Urquhart a kick towards the goal area, ah, beautiful mark for young Wallace, Wallace will end up getting four goals I would think, his four and associate rover Richardson six would make a total of ten out of seventeen of Collingwood's goals, that's the setup. The last Wallace to play league football was Jim Wallace of St Kilda, the side which Collingwood is treating so poorly here. And through injury, he uh, has returned to the country district of Quambertook. Wallace was a noted high flyer, could get up very high and take a good mark. He's missed from the Saints lineup today, that's for sure. They could do with some fellows with a bit of spring in their step to counter the tall timber that the Collingwood team has launched against them. Adamson holding St Kilda's advance up on the back line. Straight to Pitt on the wing. The light is very poor. If it had been a cricket match, stumps would have been declared about an hour ago. <laughs> Jenkin. <laughs> Nearly a good mark. Crowd starts to scream ball was swept away and across the line for another throw in. Only a couple of minutes left if that. Minot jostling with Jenkins. 
Dave Norman. Hand pass to Farmer, 19th man to 20th man. Farmer grab were not in possession, could be his free kick, keeps the ball in play, still going fast. There is a free kick somewhere and it seems to be against Farmer, judging by his reaction. Farmer evidently, according to the umpire, was in possession of the ball when held. Cooper's short pass along the boundary line. It's taken down there by Verdon Howe. Howell in defence for the Saints. Along the boundary line towards Stewart. Stewart in front could be paid this mark against his own team man in Breen. Laurie Hill pushed over after getting rid of the ball. A free kick upfield. The umpire's seen that. And Ace and Kilda, Mr. Mina gives Rob Farmer a chance of scoring a goal for the Magpies. Would be a good long kick to land it in from here, but uh, it's home territory and he should do it. The siren's gone, could be a goal right on the bell. It's touched, no score, and it's 17-14. Here's one point, it's 17-15, 17-15 the final score to St Kilda's 6-9 and the Magpies are on top of the list. <laughs>